is getting really popular to send small satellites into space for internet provision across the world, particularly where you can't use cables and so on to remote communities. Now, the problems with these satellites are that they need to manoeuvre in space to avoid flying objects or because they're not in quite the right orbit. The problem is they're really small, so you can't have a big rocket engine and you don't have anywhere for the fuel. Until recently, there haven't been very many of these satellites, so people have used xenon gas. And the xenon gas is allowed to leak into a high voltage chamber where it forms a plasma and the atoms or ions of xenon are ejected at huge speed out of the back of the satellite. You may think, how's a little bit of gas going to push the satellite? And the answer is that in space, where there's no air resistance and things are floating, you don't need very much push to get a good movement. For example, if you send a milligram of gas out at the back at a thousand meters a second, that will push a kilogram of satellite in the other direction at one millimeter a second. The problem is that xenon gas has to be held in a gas cylinder under high pressure because it's a gas and you need to have some sort of mechanical valve that can open and shut. And when you're in space, these things might stick, might not open or might stick open. And a recent paper has described how you can use iodine, which the atoms of iodine are only slightly lighter than xenon, but iodine is a solid, which if you heat it, goes directly into the gas phase, so-called sublimation. And you don't need very much power to convert the solid to the gas. So this very clever new engine uses solid iodine, which is heated up using only about one watt of power. And satellites have solar cells, so electrical power is essentially free. And then the molecules of iodine, I2, are subjected to a high voltage which dissociates them, generates I plus ions, which can be accelerated to very high speed. And then when they're ejected, you mix them with electrons so that you get both electrons and ions going out of the back. Because if you didn't, your satellite would become more and more negatively charged, which in the long run wouldn't be a good idea. But there are no moving parts. You have solid iodine. You can store it just as a lump. You don't need to have a cylinder. And in this paper, not only have people devised this iodine motor, but they've sent it up with the satellite and demonstrates that it works. They can fire it, wait a bit, fire it again, and so on. I never dreamt that iodine could be used to power a rocket. And now a completely new application for this element has been found. So next time you're in the desert and log into the internet, think of the iodine that makes it possible. Change of colour that goes so fast you don't see it changing. You can see the aluminium and the iodine mixed within this solid mixture seeing the excess iodine subliming and forming a vapour. Now if we go in close, we can hear it fizzing. 